live. So we're live now? Getting ready to be. There's a little bit of a lag. So. Cool. Yeah. All righty. There we go. We are live. Um, hello, everybody. It's 532 Central Time and I have um, friends with you joining me um, from LA. It's 3.30 their time. And I'm Elizabeth Palmer. I am an educator at the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, as I said, I have friends with you with me tonight and we'll hear about their work that is on view at the museum right now in the blow up to contemporary inflatable art exhibition. Um, and hopefully as well gain some insights into their art, creative process and how it all connects um, to their motto of magic, luck and friendships. Throughout the conversation tonight, um, we'll be taking questions um, in the comments from those of, the, those of you joining us live on Facebook. Um, and so with that, Sam, Arturo, thank you so much um, for joining me um, this evening. Um, or I guess it's still afternoon for you guys. Um, so thank you so much <coughs> for being here. Um, I'm really excited to hear from the two of you about your work. Um, but before we get um, too deep into that, I do want to share a brief introduction for those at home who may not know um, your names. And so the two of you, um, we have Samuel um, or Sam Borkson and Arturo Sandoval. Um, and the two of you formed Friends With You um, in Miami, Florida in 2002. Um, the collaborative um, began with um, the intention to bring more joy and kindness and love to the world. Um, they started by creating soft um, sculptures as a means to spread more accessible art, including plush toys, um, wood toys, and currently um, notice that you guys have stickers now in your store, which is very exciting and also very accessible for people to purchase and throw on their laptops, their wall binders, whatever people sticker these days. Um, and they're also, um, you know, they spread to these immersive art installations, um, in fact, and th that they're best known for their public art spectacles, including large scale art installations, playgrounds, and performance pieces. Um, among their many accomplishments and their many works, um, they've collaborated um, with Hello Kitty. They produced the Netflix show True and the Rainbow Kingdom, and they've worked with musical artists such as Pharrell and Jay Balvin. So really, really cool. And with that, I do want to kind of share works um, for everybody to see at home. Oh my God. <laughs> there they are. Um, they're artist shot, um, headshots. Oh, and so, for the quarantine 20. <laughs> get some, get some updated one for you guys. No one's any spirit water. And um, before, and there's actually that first piece that's behind you is I think the maybe um, the same piece or part of the um, same series that um, of this first work that I wanted to show. Um, but again, I, I do want to first say um, before and like interviews and videos and um, and on your websites, you've you've described your art creations as part of this healing process um, to increase um, relatability and connection to each other um, and also the world around you um, both. Um, and we I think we see that. Um, effort through these smiling, happy characters in your work, um, like the smiling cloud that has really come up quite a bit, and um, the smile um, that we have at the museum and the never ending story Spider Man's eye piece. So, with all of that in mind, I thought we'd kind of show some pieces um, <coughs> that you guys have done and talk a bit about those and your thought process behind that. Um, and you know how it connects to 
your overall message and your motto, which is just so fun. So with that, we have this first one called A Beautiful Place. And I think this is just, it's very small, but um, you guys can talk a little bit more detailed about it, but it connects to um, Miyazaki's um, Howl's Moving Castle film. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and you know what brought this together for you guys? Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll also start maybe <clears throat> giving like an overview of like the, the practice and kind of like an introduction to our philosophy to, to give a little bit of framing to some of the stuff. But thank you, first of all, for, for having us and, and we're thrilled to, um, to share our ideas and, and to um, shed light also on the background of why we do what we do and how it plays into it. And even why we even did the piece that we did and how we got into making like inflatables <clears throat> and why we're in this show. But so again, just wanted to just start by saying thank you again for having us. Glad to have and, you. And hi to everyone. Yes. <laughs> Whomever is out there in, in the interweb. Looks like we have quite a few people with us. So hello, everybody. Welcome. So. Uh, but yeah, just this, this, this um, again, just to, to kind of like even pre-angle like our work. We, when we first started like working together, we kind of like uh, fell upon this idea that, that, <clears throat> that a lot of like the mechanics of bringing like humans together were kind of like falling apart in like a modern kind of like time. There was like a, uh, a vacancy if you were to think of for um, rituals, for, for objects that were imbued with like more than just objects themselves. Like the, the mechanics of like, of even like religion were up for grabs. So we thought that we could make work that could bring people together and fill in in that space. Like, how do we like make the human have interactions with other humans in a in a in a society and in, in, a, in a culture that has done away with a lot of like the mechanics of being together, you know, outside of like just our workplace or 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 going to school, like in a social manner, there's there was a vacancy of that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we started making art almost from that point of view, we were like, how do we make art that, that is in view with this kind of like powers that does make people feel like that they are connected through the art itself. And how do we do that in a very democratic way that also like toys with the idea of what is the art like market and we make art accessible. So, so those, some, of, some of those are kind of like the core first like birthing place of a lot of these projects that do kind of like frame a lot of the, you know, like how do we make, got into it, this painting, which is like almost like 18 years after we started with those first projects. Yeah. So I feel it's kind of like <clears throat> a good idea to kind of like talk maybe about some of those core values before we get into the rest of the work. Yeah, perfect. And I did want to, before we um, got into inflatables, I did want to start with like the painting and the like the small soft sculpture assemblages. Um, like the plastic works. Yeah, um, that you guys also do before. I, a lot of um, your work um, that I have images of tonight, but you do so much more, right, um, are inflatable. So getting, getting into that. So started with um, the soft sculptures, but um, are you both painters? Do you both paint regularly? Like how did this be a beautiful place to kind of come together? Like what made you think painting? Yeah, I mean, I think just to like go back to even what Chidi was mentioning is like all of these objects are, you know, just almost artifacts of this like whole spiritual practice, you know? So it's not like we've painted and we sculpt and we think like with our minds, it's like a very conceptual kind of like art practice like we found. And literally like the basis and the simplicity of it is like through the fine art world, but also through like larger culture to spread, you know, kindness and compassion as you were like saying, you know, with your intro of us, which was like really cool and thoughtful. So thanks for that. And um yeah, so like, I mean, we've always painted and sculpted and made things like that, like our whole lives, you know, and, and 
and how we've gotten to this is like a long journey which even like Tudi like started to like try to unpack but it is a lot to like get to hear and even explain why and how we made this because at its surface it's like a Claude Monet inspired impressionistic oil painting mixed with Miyazaki's like house moving castle like beautiful landscape that is like us making impressionistic painting but like why it's more important to talk about the whole like macro of it all is that the object is just like a piece of like the magic you know it's like a whole world and wonderland of this like whole thing but it's like um the, it's like a creation in this whole amazing adventure of how do we like emotionally connect to people and with this pieces we were like how do we even in this world that is so shaky and disturbed how do we return people to a beautiful place you know and that was really like the idea and what became the the title of this piece was like you know how do how do we do this in like a new way and you know with with all that we're thinking now in the world the internet is like so prevalent and ideas are so flowing that as we added like dimension and tiny impressionistic impressionistic paintings inside of this large painting it started to come alive to us and become an interactive thing that is also similar to like our larger scale installative work that really like started us going. So there's so much packed in, like all of that history and intention is all packed into this work that it's like just showing this beautiful, like, you know, landscape, but beyond the landscape is like all the heart and soul of like trying to make almost like a, a static device that is encapsulating everything that's going on, like almost a reflection of us and like, what we idealize as like a beautiful natural world and depicting that um, as like almost like an interactive installation as well it is like crazy conceptual as well it is just like a pretty nice like place you know yeah it's very pretty and it, it does it just still immerses you just like your um you yeah. know larger installations i mean yeah, i was gonna I, mention that 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 even in that regard this kind of works is also like a pseudo container and and also alludes to like also like religious like paintings in the scale and it's like vastness which is something that you know this is not the type of painting that you actually own in your house this is something that is out of the home scale so it becomes this like almost grander thing that you are when you get close to this painting you it's almost like a as a it takes over your whole like visual field so then it creates this like allegorical kind of like existence of you in this like planar and in that in that in that landscape i think that we also like take also another core idea to our practice is that to have an optimistic and, and a positive kind of like outlook a lot of art and majority of like contemporary art <clears throat> is really like harnessing a lot of like the like the the pain that is is the human existence or the or the nuance of like our own peculiar existence within the, the things and like the things that we find that are dear to us and we want to share. And it's like, there's tremendous value to that. There's not that we don't say that there's value to that. As a matter of fact, we're highly like motivated by a lot of people that are in that space. And we are, we're lovers of art in general, but we have taken a different kind of like angle. We're like, we want to show not just like the things that pain like us or that are peculiar about our own character, but what are archetypical ideas that everyone could relate to in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that is a unique stance point for our practice and what we've done in the past like 20 years. <clears throat> and I think this is, um, for those of you who may or may not be able to see, um, the size of this is 18 by six feet, which is quite, quite big. Um, I don't know many people who would have that blank wall face at, on their homes. <laughs> and I think while I was on your website, I think there's a picture of the two of you working on this. And it is, it, I mean, you just get that sense of scale. And yeah, there might be also like working on, on like, and maybe like something different because this is part of a series, right? Yeah, so we've done like four of them at this point. And, and the last one that we did is even way bigger. It's like, <laughs> 10 feet by 20 something. I don't know. It's like yeah. much bigger. That's amazing. I mean, I on the website, yeah. 
Uh, I, I love these like how, different. How much time do we have to go through all this work before we get to the Q and A? Just to know like how we pace ourselves to, to talk about each of these things. Oh, we can just flow with it. That's a fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's all good. Um, I'm not going to stop the conversation I if it's good agree. and if people I, are enjoying it. Take a lot of time. That you want to get <laughs> yeah, it's good. And okay, I'm going now. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, nice talking to you guys. I had fun, but I'm out of here. <laughs> Sorry. Just want to make it like unexpected and weird, you know, like. Yeah. We have well, that's part of the, the conversation that we're having and people get to be part of. So. I mean, is it boring for people out there? Are you, do you guys want to ask something now? Like, we don't want to like talk also too much. I do but, have like, um, not, a comment like, from um, Alice saying she was wondering the same thing about references to religion. And so far people are just you know they're they're joining us still um as they're coming off we don't really actually use a lot of like specific like references to like religion themselves you have to think about it almost like that what we do is is use like archetypical kind of like ideas so an archetype for like, people that don't know these are almost like concepts that are uh, or ideas that are imbued with a lot more than they seem at first sight, almost like to describe it, you know? So, and there are things that are universal, that, that are cross-cultural, that they are, uh, you know, post every like time frame. like the archetype of the mother has always been around because we've always had a mother, you know? Yeah, and like, just to add to like this, yeah. like even like, like our great like, cloud character is like this archetype that we created that is like, how we view a multinational like new symbol for peace yeah. and like like everybody knows what a cloud is and making it animistic was like kind of like the concept of like that that idea you know and but it's like it's like religion is like now open source you know yeah. just to even like go off of what like Tudi was mentioning is like like it's it's like all these religions when compared um you know they're similar stories with different names you know and mm -hmm. they're like how do we get to like the one unified world, you know, and respect and love each other's religions and cultures and nationality, but like, like what is really like the next thing? That's like really what we've been focused on. And okay. we, friends with you, even like we started it, we're like, this is like a religion, but open source, like with no leaders, with no like dogma and no like set ideas, you know, like what, what does that religion look like, you know, like. And that's the difference between like a, a religious idea and what we're trying to propose, which is actually, if you were to get into like a grand kind of level, you would say it's more of a, uh, of a spirituality that versus like religious, mm -hmm. is the idea that there is like this spirits or that there are, that the, the idea of consciousness of like, or, or the anima or what animates us to be alive is yeah. not like strictly like solely contained within just the human race mm -hmm. which is something that it is very like western so we've also taken a lot of influence from a lot of like uh, oriental kind of like philosophy or like animistic or primitive kind of like philosophy which kind of like was a lot more direct in the sense that like that what is animated what is has a spirit is not just humans but everything the earth the the, the a rock and the trees the a, a cloud just that core idea almost like a it is a little bit of a retro like thing that we're trying to do all the way to like the first primitive religion it's like the concept of like going all the way back to no no dogma no 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 agenda no moral agenda it's just the the core idea is that we're not just the only ones that are alive and that our consciousness didn't just come to us that but that is in you and everything I really like that. And that's, um, you know, studying the art history, um, you know, you just looking at the art that early humans created, like just that consciousness and like, how, like us processing that and what that really means, like to each other and to this like grander universe as well. And I think that's it's just really cool that both of you are still like, what does that look like here? You know, here it is. And yeah. but in a positive way. And, you know, this, I mean, it's just, looking at it more it has that very garden like peaceful perfect garden that a lot of um religions do have i mean right now with all of the different like scenes that are happening in it i'm very much reminded of like hieronymus botches like 
yeah. garden scene. I don't know if that was an influence at all. And no, also, I love that Baby Yoda has joined us. Uh -huh. um, excellent. <laughs> so I mean, you Raga. definitely get those those. Hey, oh, now we know his name, Raga. Uh, he's forever Baby Yoda. <laughs> I know, yeah, he's forever know. Baby Yoda, but he is Grogu. I don't know how I feel about the name. But you kind of have to call him by the name so that he does like the tricks and stuff. It's you true. Know? You have to connect yeah. with him. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll practice saying the name. We just have to, you know, get used to it. Grogu's <laughs> a cool name, though. I'm not I'm, mad at it. I'm not mad either. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. I, I, maybe I was just like attached to Baby Yoda for so long that Grogu is like, oh, I wasn't prepared for that. And I know. I need to get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm glad Grogu is here and um <laughs> <laughs> and little cloud boy too. And cloud like boy related, well. you know, yeah. like little cloud boy does, you know, is a like ancestor of Grogu. So I think that they have some kind of relationship, you know? Yeah. He's like an uncle, even though he's a cuter little boy. <laughs> <laughs> what we got the like this family connection element now. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Um Alice says, thank you for exploring that idea. And um, do you guys want to look at some other um, works and how they kind of fit into this larger narrative um, and history? Um, yeah, let's keep going or okay, whatever yeah. you guys want. Like, okay. I'd like it to be like, also like choose your own adventure. Like if anybody, we don't know who's watching, like we didn't talk, I don't know if we told like our, our people, I don't know if we knew how to like connect the Instagram or Facebook people uh, into yeah. this, but um. Like, if anybody's out there that's like wants to like choose what to do, like we're open to that. Is anybody saying like any cool stuff or? I mean, we not, can also like. Not yet, but let's. Fine, in, you know? Um, I think encouraging them. I think that is very new. <laughs> oh, cool! Yeah, direction. yeah. Like, let's make it interactive. Do you guys want to yeah. ask us like anything you want? Like, get weird. You can ask us anything. We're like yeah. just humans, and we're here to like help you guys. Like, not just tell you about like what we do, but. Like, how do we help you and your specific goals and dreams? And, you know, it's a, been a very weird journey that we've been on. Mm -hmm. And like, we're like really happy to like help you guys to achieve that for yourselves. Cause we need like a lot of artists that are exploring this very new and very open, like almost manifest destiny of like creative potential and ability right now. It's like, there's a huge chasm of like digital space and like, new mediums and it's like it's like really exciting that's that's kind of like i'm happy you did a little bit of an overview before you even talked about why this painting or how this painting get, got made is like art right now is like so open it's like it can be a puppet it can be like a doll it can be like um a tv show it can be like a film it can be a music video or a song it's like so free right now it could be literally like a t-shirt like you can make your best well, artwork on a t-shirt like tomorrow anybody out there and you know we're at the same level so it's not well, i think that's really interesting like i think it almost has now become like whatever we create and produce yeah. that you know that has that in a way is art itself i mean it gets into food too like food is an you know art form um in some way you know because you're putting it together and you're putting identity and all that so there yeah, is so we, much we, um, we were always very interested in that also like almost happened, happened also like haphazardly because we didn't go to like art school and we didn't really like um, got drilled into like, okay, these are the steps to become like a fine artist. This is like what you do. And this is like how you pursue like this relationship so that you can get to a gallery and like do this like kind of like prescribed kind of like mode. Um, we, we are kind of like first generation like internet like children. Mm -hmm. So we, we are like first adapters of this like cosmic like new way yeah, of it's culture new. it's like you know so i think that like it is interest. we see ourselves as an experiment yeah uh, we see ourselves so young yeah. too like in it like we've been working together like 19 20 years now and literally like we're just like starting like there's so much like of our biggest projects that are literally like like just starting like you guys will see really what we've been really working on for 20 years in the next two years you'll see like the the first like like buds of those things you know it's yeah. like we've we, it's been all a journey even though like you say that we've had successes and failures and like this whole thing it's been such a crazy fun thing and you know you guys have that available to you now you know to really get in the game now more than ever you know yeah 
really like just a really cool time to be in it. Show yeah. Some more different yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's show some background for the for, for, for people to inspire even more questions. Yeah. Stuff. So here's a fun one. This might be um, <clears throat> the unified field two that has um, different generations of Pokemon. Um, I don't know if anybody out there is you know familiar with Pokemon. Um, like I am, I grew, I, I was talking to you guys yesterday um, about growing up with Pokemon, like playing on my Game Boy, Pokemon Red and Yellow and watching the TV show and collecting the cards and even leading up to Pokemon Go that I still play, I know. You know. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> but I didn't know all that other Pokemon activity. It makes sense now that the Pokemon Go is still going. So. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and they've just they keep releasing um, different generations, and now you can battle trainers, and there's Whoa. just so much to do now. That is like the game. Hell yeah! Is, is the battling has the battling gotten a little bit better? Because I did play when it first came out, and it was like, wow! Oh, it's leagues better. Okay, leagues. The I mean, gems are. Back, uh, yeah, come we'll back, we'll be friends. Right <laughs> Maybe um, that's Christmas. <laughs> And what's really cool in um, COVID right now is that they've really expanded the remote. So now you can you can invite your friends in Arizona or in New York and to raids with you, and you can uh -huh. battle with players across you know the country and the oh, globe. That's great. It's so cool. Um, that is cool. Yeah. So it's really come back, come back. <laughs> um, especially since you know you're you got works like these which are just um just so fun um even maybe for people who don't know pokemon as what well, like know the names um i won't nerd out too much about the names yeah. <laughs> just go for it just go right on. okay i mean i really enjoy like the different um the pikachus that are in here like oh the like muscular one that was like really like a shock factor to me i, I wasn't ready and then i found like the poo version yeah, the poo pikachu here. is very special i'm happy you pointed that out yeah why, why is it why is it special does it no 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 just all the different variations are like are here is like just so amazing you know like it's it's just like it's oh, there's cool. dark Pikachu over here. Mm -hmm. I know. It's hard to see also like the the pe the piece is so rich. There's so much detail in it. This took like you know six, seven, eight months worth of yeah. work. Uh, I bet it did. I yeah. was sent this image like uh, like a huge image that I really had to compress it down to fit it into this slideshow. Yeah. Each of those oh, things are good. done like sculpturally, you know. So I, I feel like that unless you are aware of it like you would think it's just a painting it's not a painting this is actually like made out of plastic and it is like all relief and sculptural each of those pieces so yeah. it's so there is like a raised element there yeah. that you can't really tell in an image um and i mean just just because i've, I've looked at it i mean and i don't know if this is coming across to those at home but like the pokeballs that are in the pokeball here um yeah. and <laughs> roommates calling me a nerd <laughs> <laughs> i think we're definitely this is nerd zone we're, yeah we're... i mean it really is and i mean it's part gaming culture i mean you got ash in the middle here with like the pokeball and the pokemon card mm -hmm. and he's holding um a raspberry yes this is work <laughs> and so, uh, this is work yeah <laughs> I get to talk about Pokemon and art together. It's cool. <laughs> it and is I, true because, like, even that's like, kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah. Is this work? I love this. Yeah, I I love what I do. I love being able to talk to artists and you know these you know, especially like when it comes like pop culture and I think maybe you this is also like relatability, too, and yeah. connecting together, um, especially with uh, I just noticed the Game Boy up here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so rich. Um, I could stare at this piece just like the landscape before, you know, a beautiful place. I could probably stare at that and find new things as well. But yeah, just the different generations that you guys have included here. I mean, the shinies, um, like this Weedle over here <laughs> and the Alolan, like Vulpix. Um, I love how you know, like you probably know every one of those names. Was, uh, I, I'm pretty close to knowing most of them. 
I wow, am not ashamed to say it to everybody at home. <laughs> well, oh, that's just, awesome. This is a safe space. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Coming home to watch Pokemon and you know the song at the end of the show. Did you guys? Do you guys remember yeah. that? Yeah, they had the rap song that goes through the name of the first yeah. 151. And yeah, I definitely um, try to memorize all of those. Um, That's amazing. <laughs> talent that I have in my head that doesn't That's do anything else with Pokemon. <laughs> oh, that's super important. That's how you're here right now. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We got a comment um, from Jane. It's really cool to see how this piece connects to a generation of Pokemon fans, but also introduces people to these characters. Yeah, um, I think that was the cool thing about Pokemon Go too. Yeah, and I think it makes that uh, mythology of the Pokemon into a much bigger kind of like idea, which is almost like this unified feel thing, or like even like a a, a a empowerment or a human empowerment thing, which is are very unique to the actual Pokemon like dynamics. Is that like it was like a projection of your own power or like the supernatural power somehow. That yeah. the actual like, you know, that you get to play with or through. So mm -hmm. it's like I think that like those ideas, it's interesting to us, and and that's why this tapestry of of all these powers and making them into like that it is like one concept as opposed to individual like powers, but it is a unified field of all this like kind of like like power is something that's that's kind of cool. Even though like that that is like more like our, our own brains and our own way how we philosophize about this, but you know, it's, it's, you can, that's what's amazing about art. You know, people are going to see it, they're going to interpret it, they're going to internalize it, they're going to relate to it like differently. And, and that's what's really like infinitely like uh, interesting about this stuff. Yeah. And going back to um, the, the spiritual, the energy and the power, um, you know, it was really, I think Pokemon was really great with the different types of Pokemon, like having the grass and insect Pokemon third moment again um you know to connect with nature and then having like ghosts and psychic pokemon to kind of help like with the more spiritual other side um as well and then the energy like electric pokemon um the <laughs> um you know just kind of exploring that electricity element too and getting people to think about that element of power um yeah. And the science too behind, you know, that I think was really um, just really clever of them. And then you, there is the idea of collecting them all. And I feel that with this piece, um, yeah, especially like this, with all the different balls. That this one piece in. is them all. Like this is them all. Like, so it's like one person or one museum or someplace will have this and they will have all of them. That was like kind of like the goal was like, like making a piece that was representative of collecting them all, you know, and that was kind of like the goal when we were making this one. It's like really trying to make as many as we can think about that we liked and combining them and like doing different versions of them so that like no one else could have them. Like making it the, really the most unique Pokemon piece that like ever existed, you know, it was kind of like the yeah. goal, you know? Cool, I got, I connected with that. Awesome. <laughs> Um, are these, I, I, I just noticed this too, are these the gem badges? Those are actual um, wishes from, they're actual wishes from our show, True in the Rainbow Kingdom, oh, are in okay. that Pokeball. Yeah. That's awesome. And it, it's in a rainbow. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So now like connecting to your other yeah. work um, in a more literal, you know, way. Yeah. Um, I have to go back because that got lost when I was in the big image. <laughs> Well, cool. This is really great. Um, we'll move on since, you know, um, it looks like there aren't some Pokemon fans. We didn't talk about Bulbasaur. Oh, man. Yeah. Gotta talk about and, Bulbasaur. And, and I love the Squirtles like the with ditto, the sunglasses. The, what about the Ditto Pikachu? You didn't even mention that. I love that. Too. We no, can no, talk about kidding. this. He's all night long <laughs> if you want to. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, well, I will, um, how did you, did you guys think about the unknown letters that you chose? What's that? The unknown um, letters. Oh yeah, there's like there's there's a whole series of them. They're all over the thing. Excellent. Did you include them all or? Yeah, all of them. Oh well, now I'm gonna wow. go back in and treat this like an I spy moment and just check everybody off. It's literally like a Where's Waldo. 
Yeah. <laughs> That really, that, and that, ha, you know, that brings memories of those games as well. Um, yeah, we could, I, I won't do that to the viewers at, you know, at home, but um, literally could just then. I mean, is anybody still even there? Can you tell? Should, should we tell our, should we tell people to come to this or something? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but if anybody ha knows, um, you know, if your children are Pokemon fans, if you know Pokemon oh. friends, you should share this piece with them because it's amazing and you would make their day. All right, let's see what else we got, guys. Ah, uh, this is fun. This makes me happy. I just want to go play in this. Um, this is called Rainbow City. Um, and this, um, so this is, we're, we're getting into your inflatable work. Um, how did you make the move into inflatables? I think it was like really about how do we like, make the biggest like kind of impact um, that could like pack down and like easily like travel was kind of the idea. And so that's kind of what we were engineering here is like, how do we bring a whole environment? Like almost like this, this installation was based on the spiritual um, celebration of Holi, you know, like the, where they throw the colors like on each other and they're all colorified by, you know, that exuberant thing. And, you know, we're like, how do we make that for like a modern, like ritual type of interactive and communal type of thing? So it was like all of those intentions going into this, like, how do we make a whole city? How do we make a religious and without any dogma that is like these gigantic, almost like toy versions of these religious like ideas. And, you know, so we had created this idea called Rainbow City and it went from, you know, city to city, starting in Toronto and then Miami and Art Basel for uh, during Art Basel uh, that we did a concert with Pharrell with all these uh, these these pieces here. And some of them are bounce houses. Some of them are like interactive things that you can play with. It was like you can touch everything, you know, and play with every element of it. And that was kind of like the concept. That's cool. I think all museum goers just like head exploded. Like I can touch things. That's awesome. <laughs> you can touch yeah. the art. Totally. Well, this is just um, it just it's just so happy. It's just so nice. And I do have um, a question slash comment um, from Jennifer. And I think going into this world um, that we kind of touched on, it seems that. Um, their work presents an alternate world, one that is aspirational, positive, and idealized. While it is much needed in these difficult times, how have the events of the past year um, affected you guys and how might it manifest in your work going forward? And I think that might be something too that we're all kind of dealing with right now. Um, you know, the impact this year has been, and it's been a hard year. Um, I feel like for us to answer that question has been like, we've been like mole people, I don't know, like in the cave, like making the most stuff ever and thank God or universe or whatever, like we pray to, you know, like yeah. we're so grateful, like that we could keep our studio going and growing. And like, I don't know, we've been, we've been like super powered by this. Like it's been like, 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 from those hurt and sadness that everybody's feeling and that feeling the empathy of this crazy moment of like that we're like like feel the universe helping us and us being able to have more energy to do the work consistently and like grow all these flowers and concepts and create new ones and throw everything out and start anew and be okay with that and be fluid and yeah. like really like I, I feel like I've done like a ton of personal growing and I feel like we've done, um, you know, growing as like friends and brothers, like working on this stuff for so long. Like, so it's like, you know, I think that, you know, it's really like, I feel a lot of creatives have felt that as well, you know? Yeah. I, I feel also like, and this might be like, um, like something that might be unique to people that are like obsessive or compulsive or, um, or just demented like how we are but i feel like that like it's almost like people that that you know there's like a cold day and they're like oh there's no global warming you know what i'm saying it's like it's 
it's hard it's hard it's kind of our our part of our job to stick to like a core idea that is much bigger than what's happening in this like calendar year and to really like put uh, into the world all this like positive kind of like work it transcends just the happening of one year it's actually super fitting that it is happening now that we are half work out that does help people and we get tons of feedback that it is helping and that it does work but it's like the problem that we saw and like what we're trying to do and what we're trying to bring to the world is definitely infinitely like needed past this year and i feel like that is also like very like it's also part of our, like our mantra and kind of like the things that we like talk about and philosophize about and like really like try to keep in front of mind is not to be like myopic with like the way that you see the world and be like very informed about like the the general thing and 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 you have to see it for the amazingness that it has been like if this will have happened in another like space and time millions of people will have died many 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 multipliers of millions that there are going to die we were able to develop a vaccine within a year this is all like you you know what I'm saying i don't know like it's a part of our nature to really like take these things and be like what no we did amazing as a matter of fact we might have botched it here and there and yeah but like do you choose to like really focus on like the nitty gritty of like the things that went wrong or do you mm -hmm. see the thing and be like holy shit amazing we did this thing not only that but we developed the style of vaccine that is on on parallel the vaccine that is going are going to be rolled out are a completely new different vaccine they're not even going to inject us with the actual virus there's this new way of like doing vaccines so it's like all these things that like so it's like how what do you look at is important do you look at the thing that's wrong or do you look at the positive thing of how we actually reacted to it at a global community to like well, we are going to like tackle this thing within a year, within a calendar year, we're going to be out of it by next March with the rollout of the vaccine. That's supposedly what's happening. So I think like it is, it's, it's important and it's part of like our philosophy to really look at these things like long-term, like you have to like, and I, I think this is like something that's, that is a good advice just for people in general. You, it's hard to like, and it is easier said than done. This is even for our own selves. This is also easier said than done. But it's like you have to like see past just the the immediate like hurdle and be like what is the actual like goal and like focus on that and keep it. And so we've been for the the whole duration of the pandemic just focus on our long goals and so we've been working mostly and and, and very intensely not mostly but a big part of it has been on the intellectual property so like TV shows that we're developing mm -hmm. that tackle a lot of this like grander goals or this more like social kind of change that we want to see in the world. And those things that take a long time to do. So it's like, okay, so we can be doing experiential art out in the world. We'll spend the time like developing these things that we could only do ourselves in here in the studio. And those are the things that are gonna come out, you know, two years from now. So it's like, this time has been good for us to, to harness that kind of like energy that we had to put into this thing. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And I think, um you know, just a great, like a reminder. I think we can, uh, many of us can get like bogged down by- All of us, us too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody. I mean, he's Everybody. all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's easier said these things that, and, and you know, it's it's easier always to talk about it and and and, 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 and rationalize it than to really live it. But it, you know, as we have people's ears, it's good to hear, it's good even to hear for ourselves. Yeah. Well, and it's just, um, you know, just a nice check in to also, you know, while it really does, you may not want to stay home, you may want to go like travel, you know, the world country may not be able to do that. But like what you can do now, like you guys being able to like, become like mole artist and just like be able to ah. use, um, you know, that's really, I mean, that's really great. That's, that's cool. And, you know, I, it's always weird, I think. Um, I have found myself saying this um, a few times um, during the pandemic, it's like the kind of the good things that have we've been shown through this, like, you know, that we are so fortunate to have technology, right? Like I'm able to have a conversation with the both of you and share it across, 
you know, social media yeah, platform. Yeah, like, like before this, we weren't like doing this at all. Like not even yeah. posted as much. Like yeah, literally like anybody that's watching this can be watching this from like wherever, you know? And, yeah, like, I mean, I know. Which is cool. Yeah, I know somebody on here is watching from Oklahoma, which is amazing. Um, as well as, you know, Alabama and- Oklahoma. Um, <laughs> yeah i'm sure yeah like and and, there, and also a cool thing is like this is going to go into like the world like on youtube this recorded thing so like people there like out there that are interacting asking us questions like anything can happen like right now like literally like you can make an art piece with us right now by like sparking a new idea or intention and that's like i think where we're going as humans and like we stay not only positive about like what's going on now and like to the best of our ability which we are always struggling as humans but we're like really like we are we are tasked with like like architecting the future you know like really creating the first society like there hasn't been a society it's been like control mechanisms and countries and corporations that like really like you know are have been like our like strange masters and you know leading us astray into this false reality that we don't know where it is but now it's time for us to be like Yo, let's make a new reality that is all of us, you know, like an equal, like unified, universal and yeah. worldly front that is like, like not made yet. Like, how do we start to build that? And that's kind of like what we're all working on together. That's kind of what Rainbow City was like a little bit, you know, like this piece, this installation is like a little attempt at like, like unifying like the colors and this toy like an interactive sense that you can play with mm -hmm. but it's like where do we go from here you know like we're still exploring it which is really fun yeah. and maybe like as we look at some of the pieces we can explore how you guys have created your work and hope to use your work to create inspire and push forward social change um i'd love to hear more about that um and I think some of our viewers would as well. Yeah. Um, so shall we, shall we continue? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Oh, here's Rainbow Valley. Okay. Uh, getting to more of those colors. So tell us about this and, you know, um, and part of this like larger philosophy that you guys have and social change. And I think this also connects to the Netflix show that you guys um, produced on Netflix. Yeah, this actually predates that show like by 10 years, but definitely connects to okay. it like in essence, um, you know, the whole idea of animism and that, you know, everything has a soul, including like our like earth and, you know, each flower and each cloud and each thing, I think like takes the human from the center of the universe and like puts us as like, just one with all these things you know it's like kind of like a buddhist type of like idea that is you know really um something that we felt was like important to like tell and share with people you know and mm -hmm. especially kids which is why we made this our first public and permanent installation rainbow valley um and now is also like a television show that's been on netflix true in the rainbow kingdom which was like also about that teaching um, about our living world and having compassion for each other and the world. So that was definitely like one of like our major little satellites of social change and gave us the power and ability and understanding that we could do that in a bunch more ways and bigger impacts and starting businesses that you know are good for the world and sustainable. So we are spending, as Tudi mentioned, a lot of our time besides the actual physical art making into like, how do we lend and use our services and creative ideas to really change culture and help humanity and its relationship to our earth. Yeah, and I really like how um, you guys have, you know, I mean, here, you know, creating a playground and, you know, teaching these, um, I guess, values um, to children, because um, if you really want to change, you do have to, you know, start at, you know, the young ones and still it there. And that way they can, you know, continue it on. Um, well, it, it also makes it like, where it isn't just like, um, just entertainment. It is an actual, like, you are shaping like culture, you know, like, mm -hmm. 
if you once the the audience is a lot older or it's us for instance then we're just kind of like observing but you're not really shaping like the mind anymore right so yeah. we we we're very interested in the idea of like speaking to to kids to really address this kind of like core issues like really like um you know one of the greatest like kind of like catastrophes that has ever happened in all human races which is the idea of objectifying like the earth to be in servitude to a human you know mm -hmm. you know separating it from its own humanity or its own like uh, animistic idea the idea that like yeah. it's you know in our service kind of like that is a huge uh inspiration to us and is at the core of our first netflix show which you, you were bringing up and sam was touching on it's really trying to like okay every, every, everything is alive and you should respect it as such as opposed to just being in your service that sounds like simplistic and something that that it is it could be perceived as that but to to kind of like indoctrinate or induction is the wrong term but to to kind of like shape a, a sense of, of value that is core to that idea for young minds is we think at least in our own minds that there's value to that for us and it brings purpose to what we do it's all those things are like so important just to to feel the energy of like okay we're doing something for 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 actual culture in general that it is working you know yeah well and and just just really great and just um you know make you know having children realize that these you know systems of animals or you know plants yeah. too since they're living things yeah you know they do exist outside of our um needs engagement and yeah. needs with those um i mean yeah. I don't, I don't know a lot of children that would sit through a documentary, but, you know, these systems where everything, you know, they exist and they have their own little systems and little yeah. societies and cultures and they feel yeah. things. Um, you yeah, know. We, again, it's like, somehow it's almost like, um, like the first, you know, it's almost like, uh, like you always want to go back to like the first take, be like, oh man, that was always like the best take anyways. Yeah. It was the same thing with like culture like the first our first hooray where we were like just primitive like hunters and gathering and we were in communal kind of like symbiotic relationship with the natural world mm -hmm. i mean it would have given us like this capacity that we're basically speaking through magic you know like in real time but it did have a more like holistic kind of like way of relating to the planet so we definitely think that there's value to that to bring back that's great. And that's, you know, just one aspect that you guys are using um, to, you know, to push um, some social change by instilling yeah. those. So that's really, just really, really cool. And I love that the water, like the little lake ponds also have smiling faces. Like they also yeah. have, you know, it really is everything um, has that energy and spirit um, to them. And I love little mushrooms too. Those are, those are super <laughs> fun and cute. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, more clouds um, from the concert that you guys have mentioned um, before. Um, and a little bit on um, some stage too. Um, you guys want to tell us about about this experience? Yeah, this was kind of like an amazing thing that we did for the artist Jay Balvin. Uh, he just like ended up being like such an amazing collaborator and like willingness to like you know, really like create something that was between a concert and, ex and, a, and an experience um, with like this amazing, um, who was the guys that did this? The we were Square Division? Mm -hmm. Square, Square Division. Division. Square Division was like an incredible like producer and it was just like, how do we make something that is an experience and an installation and like a concert all at the same time? And we actually, and vis like visualize it and it came true you know we really were able to really push it and make something really really crazy and experiential so it, it was like such a great experience for us and super interactive and like really really like people loved it like so much it was just like such a highlight for us like seeing all these elements come together and 
so many elements come together for each song, like having like a whole nother setup. It was like a theatrical, like Cirque du Soleil kind of like for a, like a huge pop concert. And it really, really worked. And it was like, like kind of visually and sensorily like mind blowing, it just made you feel so good and so happy. And it was so fun. And, you know, we love Jose so much and he was so open to spreading this like love and kindness and and it just like really like went down so so smoothly and so like such a such a happy project for sure yeah and again another one of those things where it's like okay how do we take our art for everyone and this is like another device it's like away from just the constraints of like the the museum and the gathering and it's like how do we bring it for everyone and, you know unexpectedly yeah. like this is another like great kind of moment where we got to do that at a grand scale yeah everyone who's i mean the thousands of people that are in you know that you know seeing the show that oh, maybe like wouldn't have been year. to huh we toured for a whole year like, whole, whole many, year um yeah, hundreds of thousands of people got to yeah. see it and yeah. you may not go to you know, art museums or see your work, but like you yeah. being able to bring that into their space and they have this wonderful, fun, kind, happy experience that, you know, I'm sure had an impact on them and they'll carry it with them going yeah. forward after that. Um, yeah, that's the whole idea is like making those impactful experiences that we carry with us and giving those to people like the best ones that we would want for ourselves, like actually you know, from working together so long, the ability to like dream them, execute them and bring them to like huge audiences is like amazing for us. It was like, you know, it, and we're gonna continue doing it. Like I said, like, I feel like we're just getting started. We're like, you know, not like the youngest anymore, but we're like, we're been, we've been kept like so young from doing this and able to like make this work somehow, like through the best, worst, failures and no money to like a very like you know great like moment of abundance like right now and we're just like happy to continue and like serve all you guys out there like and everybody that we can touch you know i mean just i mean just the wonderful ways that you um your collaborative has found ways um you know through these experiences through the playgrounds through cloud boy um you know stickers and pokemon i mean just all these different ways to connect with people and you know making a difference i think that impact i, I sure we'll see that you know like the the fruits of that um hope next year that's it's the end of the year we're reflective right um you know in the upcoming year will be more positive um and going back to what um, you know, long term thinking positively long term and what we're able to do in this totally. moment right now. Because um, any other time you're right in history, we wouldn't we wouldn't have these um, these opportunities um, and these yeah. outcomes. I mean, that's always something that we talk about and, and, and we like to like just bring attention to like that it is like something that's important to keep like yourself informed and, and to look at, at history at a grander scale, not so much like in a, you know, we are a little bit like being preyed on by the media yeah. and them wanting our attention all the time. And the only way to do that is really to, to raise these flags of like, you know, of, 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 of worrisome, you know, if, if mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why the news is all worrisome because it's the thing that really gets your attention. You know, there's no happiness network, but there should be, you know, <laughs> and I feel like that, we need it. No, man. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like that, that is something that is, it's kind of like hard to keep your eye on, but our work revolves around that, like really trying to push that, that philosophy and that idea forward. Definitely see it. Well, we'll look to get some more, shall we? Yeah, let's go. Oh, more clouds. Yeah. Into, into the clouds. I love this like interior space with clouds coming into it and just um, it's like having, the, seeing their happy faces. That's so nice while people are going about their every day. Um, yeah, know. it's almost hard not to smile at this picture. Like you're like, mm. yeah. 
and it's hard to not smile because that's like now we are the one manipulating like people you know like okay. so we, because in the sense that like you can you know mimicry is something that's like spinal to us so it's like if you see something that's smiling at you you're gonna smile back at it mm-hmm. it's hard to really like see something smiling and you're like you know it's like right. <laughs> you know so yeah, I can't tell you. I've tried smiling, um, just being from the South, um, just trying to smile. Like when I lived in D.C. and I would just be like, hello. And they're like, oh, no, we don't do that. You know, <laughs> I'm like, but they, I mean, it's a good day. It's a beautiful day, um, you know, and it, it is so great to see a smiling face while you're just going about your every day, whatever you're thinking about, whatever's stressing you out, the media, work, whatever, um, oh. and just seeing these cute little happy clouds while you're inside mm-hmm. which is just really nice those should be everywhere which is great so is most of the people that is like with you uh, you or is it people from alabama like that are watching this now i think yeah most of i think most of them um i'll be able to see more in our uh, analytics um but most of our audience is alabama oh cool how's like alabama right now with, in what way <laughs> i don't know what do you want to talk like what's going uh, we're, on we're very um we're very cold at the moment as we had talked about to you guys yesterday and um we're having a hard time with our case numbers they're still going up and um yeah, same here our yeah. our football has been impacted um that's big down there right alabama it, football. oh yes if you move to alabama you have to choose 18 you are either what are those tied or um auburn um, okay. Warhawks. So um, it's very big here. And if you come from any other conference, you have you still have to choose. <laughs> like, I, what is like what is like the best Alabama like food? Like, what are oh. we missing out on not being in Alabama that we could eat? Because we're hungry. Oh. Like we just ate some food, but I don't know. I'm still hungry. Oh, you guys, like, um, if you're viewing, you should put in some of your recommendations. Um, here in Montgomery, we have a um a surprisingly large Korean population. There's good Korean oh, food here. Amazing! I love Korean food. We yeah. have a lot of Korean here. We got that. That's color. true. You guys do have that. Um, <laughs> it's just so different um, than the standard um, Southern food, which is delicious. I love me some like biscuits and gravy and just oh, Southern comfort biscuits. food. Um, but we do have um, some really lovely Korean um, restaurants here, and. Nancy, you guys have amazing like Mexican food there too. So oh yeah, there's so much. <laughs> I'm not even gonna like recommend. Um... <laughs> I'm sure Alabama has its own like special thing. Like, what is there anything that's like Alabama? It's just like Southern cooking food is like the Alabama. Yeah, like, I think they're staple. Like one dish that's oh. Alabamian. Like oh, someone, Alabama someone like, tune in because I'm still a new transplant to Alabama. So someone oh, tune that's in. Right. Yeah, maybe some good, good, good. You guys put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean to. Can we get some help from the Alabama friends out there? What What do you guys like? What Come on, you... don't be shy. You can say it. Yeah. Um. Well, we'll let you guys think about it and comment. Ah, uh, there we go. Someone's saying buttermilk biscuits with sausage, sausage gravy. That's what you oh, like. That's I said. the thing. Ooh, yeah. sausage gravy. That yeah, sausage biscuits and gravy. Yeah, you can't sausage do anything gravy. else with. That I mean, amazing. I mean, if you're gonna go big with biscuits, you might as well do sausage gravy. That's, yeah. that's full gravy commitment that to it. That's that gravy, that white gravy that they put, the biscuits and gravy. Yeah, yeah. It's sausage. Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Sausage. yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I love it. Yeah, Ooh, that's awesome. Definitely okay. some delicious cream. We do have a restaurant here that has like a biscuit bar. Like you can build your own biscuit. Oh really? Yeah. Biscuit bar sounds good. <laughs> Right. Everybody needs that. Right Everyone needs now. that. And the happy cloud. I'm so full. Really? I need a treat or something. Or maybe I just need water. I ran out of water. Well, let's let's keep going and I won't keep you guys long so you guys can grab. No, 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 no. No, I'm just playing. Let's yeah, let's keep going. Sorry. Oh, we also um someone just said um seafood from the Gulf and um barbecue. We do have Alabama barbecue here. Um okay. good reminder. Um and, and we are barbecue. we do have that little bit of golf and we are close to Florida, so we do get that. Delicious is Alabama Gulf barbecue seafood. better than Texas barbecue? Huh? Is Alabama barbecue better than Texas barbecue? Oh, don't make me start fights. I can't do oh, that. Oh, is there fights? Is uh, fights? Well, you know, 
you know how the South is about their barbecue, especially, you know, I mean, you got Tennessee barbecue and you got you Carolina. Fantastic Texas barbecue. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm asking. I'm like, do you guys, it's comparable? Yeah, we got to go to Montgomery and it's see. It's definitely, it's, it's, it's different. There's um an Alabama white barbecue sauce. Um, white barbecue really? sauce? Yeah, yeah. Where's that? Is it like the sausage, like biscuits and <laughs> gravy? No, oh. um how do i don't even know how to describe it um but it's definitely different than texas and carolina that um Why is more mainstream is it like yeah. mayonnaise in it maybe it's the south someone cream. chime in um someone tell me the secret to to white barbecue sauce in alabama let's see let's see what else we got um you guys are just gonna have to come down yeah we and, have to go you know, try coming. it for yourself yeah we'll go we'll go excellent when it's safe to travel again, of course, because that would be unless you're in for the um, the Recovery? road trip. Oh, yeah, it's a long road trip though through Texas. He probably yeah. be filled with barbecue. So, so. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Right, go to that place. Yeah, you guys are always welcome. You just let me know when you're you're in Alabama. Yeah. We want to go to Tootsie's. Okay. <laughs> you want to go where? Tootsie's. Have you seen that the chef's table, the barbecue? Yes. Yes. That I want to go there. Snows like, barbecue. Is it snows? Yeah, that was crazy. You know what we're talking about? Yeah, I, I watched Chef Table and then I just, I, I saved them to my Google Maps for save for later. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, smart. Yeah, I do that for um a couple of the other show, like somebody feed Phil, like was he yeah, yeah, traveling around the cool. world? Okay. I do that too. So when I can travel again. Um, do you I put do them on your phone though, like in the locations? Smart. Mm -hmm. That's so good. when you you look at um can like you send me gone, those locations of those places yeah. I, want to eat there. <laughs> yeah, I can do that i want to eat there <laughs> so how, but how does it work does it like you get a notification when you're near like a place or you have to actually look in the or map you know like yeah. you're like oh i'm in this place okay. i i think i think google would like um if i was there like i'll just say um like if i went to granada um spain and i had um you know i was looking for a place around me to go eat and I had some or like saved for later, it would pop up with like a green tag. And then oh, I'd be like, oh, really? that's right. I did want to go there. Oh, and cool. you are still open. Cool. So wow. you just save for it later. Works. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that was a nice discovery in Google Map. So that's Good my tip to, to everybody at home. You use that while you're not traveling. <laughs> just pile them up. I think I have 25 places saved or. You know, even like Thailand, Japan. Um, oh my God, Japan is amazing. Savannah, uh, just, just everywhere, like watching those um, food shows. Um, all right, there we go. Somebody came in. White barbecue sauce is mayonnaise based, though. So. It's mayo based. Whoa. Got Thank it. you, Alabama. Yeah. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, come on down or over. <laughs> come on over. That sounds amazing, actually. I love that. Yeah, let's, let's wow. see what else we got. Um, since we're probably making everybody hungry or no they're eating dinner probably are you guys so. hungry or what are you guys eating can you send us a picture <laughs> someone send some pictures and we'll show you pictures of art that's what we'll do oh yeah There's another happy cloud Yay. um if you guys um anybody at home watched um the thanksgiving day parade in 2018 you probably saw this happy cloud um and coming down coming down the street and that was friends with you um you happen to miss it so again bringing that you know all of your philosophy um and you know your hope to people at home who are watching at home like that's cool too and just same thing with the concert yeah that was, a whole that was new great. audience that was an amazing adventure what a crazy, crazy. Yeah? <laughs> yeah we were walking in the parade and oh, where are you guys in here Can you we're, holding, we're holding the rainbow we're on either side of the rainbow ah there you are <laughs> yeah that's wild it was wild. <laughs> what a cool experience. It was unbelievable. <laughs> you would not even know the half of it. It was crazy. It was, it was freezing. I couldn't like, like even imagine. Degrees. It was it what? Was one, it was 18 degrees. It was one of the coldest like Thanksgiving was in record. That was less than like 10 degrees or something. It was nuts. That's like, very cold. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> What an amazing experience. You guys were very warm. You had you you like had your jacket. We were not very warm. But no? at one point in the thing, we did have to run because our inflatable died in the middle of it before like 50 million people saw like the whole thing come together. 
Oh, no. we, had to fix, we had to fix the rainbow and run to catch up back to the parade. So we were drenched, sweating, oh. and like, and like cold. 10, 20 degree weather. Like, so it was like the, one of the craziest things. I had also had like a crazy surgery like two weeks before that. And it was just a fun, crazy adventure. Like, wouldn't yeah. have it any other way, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, all part of the experience. Crazy story. So fun surrounded by like family and friends and like our studio manager helping us and one of our best friends helping us when we went like down like just so fun you know like that yeah. stuff is like you can't make it up for life it's like just really like legendary yeah moments you know that we get to live them walking down an empty street in new york with all these people oh, cheering and like what a crazy thing to see you know be a part yeah. of it. it was amazing yeah be part of that's crazy yeah. What, what a very eventful day <laughs> just it was the whole wild. experience <laughs> oh my god one of the craziest days of my life like for sure and i've fallen off of like a waterfall and shit like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> let's see what else oh the dance there we go this i think this gets into art that's a little bit different right like performances and yeah again this is also like the same thing it's almost like you know like on a like how do you get the actual like participants to become part of this ritual with you almost like a dance ritual yeah so we sam and i were inside those like uh costumes Thanks, and we have a whole like performance that we do but we're also interacting with the people so the people are touching like the actual objects and we're playing with them and like moving around them and and it's 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 basically like a real life kind of like you know communal kind of like experience that's something that is again like so important to us and when we do get to do this kind of experiences it's it's like very uh rewarding in every sense you know yeah very cool yeah so i just went to get a water refill oh no you're good you guys should have you should guys you guys should have drinks with you uh, <laughs> all the I'm casual happy. casual I'm bit out. yeah I ran out. oh here we go um, for those at home that watching, piece, those in Montgomery, fun. here's the work that you can view um, up until January at the museum. Um, this is their never ending story, Spider-Man's Eye. Um, it's suspended in our gallery from um, one of the ceilings and you can walk under it. And, you know, as you're walking in the gallery that also has um, some large inflatable flamingos and a inflatable like cute rat um <laughs> you can walk around the gallery and just really you know get you know get all views around it and so um it just really colorful again you see those smiling faces that we've touched on um and coming back to that the title and that it evokes um you know with the pop culture never-ending story Spider-Man's Eye, um, talked a little bit yesterday about like how the colors, you know, vibrated and like started sending you into other dimensions and worlds. Um, but what, what, what can you share with those at home about this piece? Yeah, I think like you covered a lot of it. It was like really about, you know, being in the space with it. I think you get like a, the best idea of it because like, your visual field is kind of like um, played with as you're like experiencing the piece and looking at it as like the colors and the vibrancy of the patterns change like piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And we created this like um, in a cool way, like as we're starting to like, you know, going from, you know, sketching into the computer and texturing in the computer and like using that as kind of like another medium to like start to play with and explore things that we can't really do with like our hands, you know, per se, you know, so it's like yeah. really going into this like interdimensional like character that brings you into in, into its environment, almost like a black hole, like sucking you into its colorful and changing and moving world all in itself, you know, yeah. and you know, Never ending story is like, you know, talking about like, you know, almost like this multi dimensions that it's bringing you on and Spider Man's eye uh, was, you know, something to do with like the new spider multi Spider Man multiverse thing 
And also in one of the textures, like we took a Spider-Man head and like made it into one of the textures in the actual sculpture. So if you see and you go and look at the piece, you can look and see if you can find Spider-Man's like head being abstracted, like in one of the sections of the sculpture. Wow. Did you spot that or no? I did not spot that. Um, oh, that's awesome. Now yeah. I have to go back and it's there again, He's like the challenge. Um, to like with the, with this work in particular, to be like, can you find this? And then everyone's just <laughs> crowding around trying to find it. Yeah, like, can uh, you find it at home? Can you guys find it? Is there? Do you have other images it, over there? Let's. So it's not on this side. No, it could be on this side too. Oh no, that's a close up of the smiley. No. It's not, not the checker. There. It's not that. Okay, that's my last slide. Um, okay, that's fine. But well, more incentive for those of you at home to come visit the museum, see it in person, and find it. And yeah, find the Spider-Man's eye. Yeah. Inside so of. So it's not on this side. No, it could be very well. It could, could be. be. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have to go. Have to go look. I don't. But yeah, this is a definitely a fun, fun piece. And yeah. I think it's also like, it's also allegorical of like, uh, also like the idea of like thoughts and like how things come in and out of like manifesting one's own like kind of like vision and the, the, the mythological kind of connotations of like uh, Spider-Man's eye. It's almost like this one eye. It's always like kind of like the third eye is like alluding yeah. to the spiritual realm and like the, you know, kind of like the what is beyond. Mm -hmm. And what is beyond in this sense also it is this digital like kind of like patterns and the more like, you know, computer generated kind of like new universe that we are connecting through. So there's a little bit of like that kind of like language and interplay there. That's very interesting for sure. Yeah, very cool. All right. Let's see. Um, got a question for you guys. What is currently inspiring you? <laughs> I, have, I mean with this a lot of things but like for instance like right now uh at least personally i'm very inspired by um some new tools that we got we've been like yeah, doing a lot of like, like 3d like modeling in like vr so it's almost like a new way to like really like generate like actual sculptures that is like just brand new it's like something literally that is like yeah. brand new like the idea to be able to make something in 3d but like then, how we do it yeah. our hands like making things like it's now connecting like that that thing is like really really for me too i was gonna yeah. almost say like the same thing is like just the potential of like all, all of these things like like that we are like kind of just forging into like like making a television show for us is like so inspiring and so crazy so it's like this no, ne next television show that we're making as well as like these new works that we're making inspire us so much because we have to learn so much to like get to the level to do the jobs that like we've been learning and doing for so long but mm -hmm. there's also so much inspiration coming from the world to us like from artists and like you know contemporaries and peers that are working in like the same thing like um you know so many friends of ours that are making like amazing work and exploring the stuff that we talk about like regularly you know yeah. i mean from Murakami to Kaz to Kunz to, you know, um, Sai Twombly and like, you know, everything from Philip Gustin to like Miyazaki and Jodorowsky and, you know, all of these things that are like constantly like in our like whirling thing from, you know, even strange ones you wouldn't adapt to us like Paul McCarthy and like Sai Twombly, like, you know, come into like our paintings and, and, and it's like, it's this like ever living thing, which we think like art is, is like this living dialogue in like the creation and inspiration and output. But now it's even more than that because it's like our friends that are making food, like you said, like our chef friends and our filmmaking friends and our musician friends and our rapper friends. So it's like all this stuff that we're flowing in inside of outside of each other, you know, it's like, yeah. So well, I'm crazy. sure, you know, having creative friends too, you know, they're doing, you know, this opportunity to allow them to create and produce and think creatively in new ways. I'm sure it's also very inspiring to like just bounce off and keep that energy going as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, it really so, is. So a couple of different answers there for um, with the viewers at home. Um, are there any other questions? We are <laughs> almost to seven o'clock here local time. Um, it's been a great conversation, but if anybody has last minute questions um, or comments for um, Sam and Arturo, um, ask them now. Um, <laughs> this is it, going once. Going twice, <laughs> come on guys. Um, you guys, it's been really great chatting with you today. Um, about all things. Um, no, thank you. Thank really you so great. much for being interested and, and and helping us share our little world with 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 uh, everyone that came to join us. Anytime. Thank you so much yeah. for you know taking time out of your busy, productive, creative schedules to <laughs> you know chat with me for an hour and a half. Um, I know your work um, has brought so much, um, you know, it's brought me a lot of joy just looking at it, um, and especially in the show and researching you guys. Um, and I'm sure it has at home. Um, there's been a couple of um, agreements that there should be a happiness network, um, but maybe we can get that on your Netflix shows. We can, that can be the closest thing we get to. And right, we're gonna make more, we're gonna make more cool television oh. shows and cool businesses like we're really gonna do like a ton of amazing stuff we really can't wait for you guys to see and like you know we think of like like everybody that is into like this kind of feeling good and wanting like the best for themselves is like kind of like on this journey with us so if you're like an artist out there or helping art get made or educating about art it's like we're kind of all like on this new adventure together so like stay in touch with us and like, let us know what's up or, you know, come like to our Insta, like say hi to us and, or whatever, like, or do your stuff. And, you know, thank you for like, whatever you're creating out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to all the creatives out there, you know, just spreading your messages of, you know, your love of art, the love of life, the world, people, um, community, just all the things. Thank you. Um, thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, those of you who asked questions, thank you so much. And um, who also, um, you know, allowed us to talk about food for a hot minute, and <laughs> <laughs> which was good. And then um, I hope everybody, I wanna invite, um, I, have, I have a few invitations for everybody at home. One um, for those, you know, who are in Montgomery to come out and see the exhibition, see the Friends With You work in the galleries. But also I invite um, you to go to Friends With You's website, join their newsletter, or if you have Instagram, follow them on Instagram so you can stay connected with them, that you can keep this joy and you can engage with them, um, say hi. Um, so just, you know, stay connected um, as, you know, as much as we can during this time, which is great that we have these means again to do that. Um, so thank you guys again. Um, yes, thank you everybody at home. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and the rest of their week. Um, stay warm out there if it's cold. Um, and then if you're stuck inside, just stay sane, we'll make it through. We'll all be good. So, thank you guys thank you guys thank you <laughs> bye